Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of the Prove Me Wrong podcast. Once again, I am your host, Pete Lieb. I have what I think is a very important show today. Um, my guest tonight is Bill Cadwallader, and we are going to talk about the potentially harmful side effects of radiation, radiation that's emitted constantly from the many smart devices and appliances that we have in our homes and on our bodies at all times. Devices that we have come to rely on for day-to-day -day living may also be causing us harm. Bill is a certified ele electromagnetic radiation specialist and the author of the book, Exposed, The Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself. He's also the co-author of Quick and Easy EMF Guide, 99 Tips to Lower Harmful Electromagnetic Radiation, and this includes EMF Comprehensive Home Safety Audit for each room in your house. Uh, he is one of 34 international EMF experts featured at the, EN, the International EMF Health Summit. He has done multiple presentations and EMF inspections around the country. He speaks extensively on solutions to harmful electromagnetic radiation. If you've never taken a moment just to kind of sit back and wonder about the safety or the dangers associated with the smart devices that we use every day, or if you have been are looking for some strategies to protect yourself from them, this episode is for you. You can find out more information about Bill and the work he is doing on his website, StopDirtyElectricity.com, and you can find his books on Amazon.com. So with that, welcome, Bill, to the Prove Me Wrong podcast. Thanks again for having me here, Pete. This is such an important subject, as you had said, and most people have no idea what's happening with this. And again, it's the good news is you talked about solutions. Mm -hmm. That's what we're all about. We'll talk about the issues. And then if we have time, we'll definitely get into the solutions that are zero cost or little cost that people can do. And most of it is just changing habits. So then to start, if you could, give me an idea of how you got involved with this work and what was the trigger point that helped you recognize how serious this was and that you wanted to be involved? Thanks. Be. Um, all my life, I've worked in IT, and I was at a, uh, my last uh, IT job was um, around Las Vegas. I live in Las Vegas in the county, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a gentleman there that every time I saw him, he actually had his cell phone uh, to his ear, and before meetings, after meetings, going to his car, whenever, and uh, he developed a huge tumor right where he held the car, not in the front not on the side, not on the back or top, right there where he held the phone. And they had massive surgery and then chemo. And we all had a sigh of relief. And then it grew back. Same place, surgery, massive chemo, and then he died. He left a wife who was now a widow. Mm -hmm. And he left seven children who are now fatherless. And at that moment in time, I knew the industry, telecommunication industry, was not going to tell us how to use portable electronic devices or any electronic devices in the safest possible way. And at that point, I decided to pursue a certification. It's about 15 courses over almost two years um, to get certified. And as you said, there's only around 30 or 34 people who are certified who are practicing in the US. And when someone you work with day in and day out develops something and the medical cures don't help and they continue to use their electronic devices, in this case, a cell phone, the same way, and it goes back exactly at the same point, there's something that's not right. And that's why we wrote the book to expose all what's happening, the collusion between government and a collusion between government and industry. And that's why we don't know about it. So, you know, you mentioned that you are one of very few EMF experts. For yes. those, for the listening public who may not know, what is EMF? What does it stand for? And, and why should we care about it? Well, EMF stands for electromagnetic uh, fields. And what we term is electromagnetic radiation or EMR. It's mm -hmm. another and we have uh, e um, electromagnetic uh, radiation in nature, which is completely different than the man-made. 
So we just started to actually man make this and it started a number of years ago and uh, the nature in, uh, in nature, it's actually just a direct current. It's just a direct current. It's something we've lived for however long we've been on earth. And then all of a sudden in the last century, we came up with this pulsating radiation, which our bodies were never subject to. And the problem is it's thousands of times in what we get in nature and we get so much of it. It's estimated that there, we get one quintillion times more than our grandparents would have gotten. And it grows every single year. And there's never been a long-term safety study, no pre-market studies. And that's the problem with all of this. There are no studies. And there's over 5,000 studies now that have been done by independent researchers, by MDs, PhDs, and scientists that show you the health effects of all these issues uh, from all these devices. And I often ask people, I say, well, how many, how many uh, studies would it take you not to smoke? You know, is it 10, is it 20, is it 100? I, I know you, you, you tell me the number. Right. And most people will say, oh, 100 or 1,000 or over 5,000. And then someone says, well, something must be wrong. But when they settle with smoking in night, the tobacco companies in the early 2000s, and in our book Exposed, uh, in the book Exposed, what we have is we have timelines on all this government collusion between industry and government. And we show that when it was finally settled in the early 2000s, that there were over 65,000 studies that talked about smoking and health effects. 65,000, I mean, how many do you really need? And someone will say, well, they just probably all did it in the last decade, you know, before that. Mm -mm. The very first study, and these are the timelines we have in the book, 1929, that linked smoking and lung cancer. But government and, and, the, and the industries colluded. And you'll say, well, that can't happen. These, these government agencies are all independent, right? Well, guess who's the head of the FCC, the Federal Communication Commission now? A former, attor a former attorney for Verizon Wireless. And guess what happens when his term is up? Guess where he goes back? So he's not gonna do anything to jeopardize these uh, fake standards that they have to prove that any of this stuff is will harm you. And that's the problem. And Harvard did a study, their business school did a study on captured agencies, agencies in the federal government who are supposed to be protecting us and they're captured by industry. That's the problem. And they said the FCC was the most captured in, uh, captured agency of any industry there is. So, and that's why they don't tell us. So what are the standards? I, I, can, I can see how there, there's money, so there isn't necessarily somebody shouting from the rooftops to, for reform. What are, is there a safe level for EMF radiation, this EMF energy? And where are we at with these devices right now? What are the standards that they're currently holding themselves to? So 1996, they passed a new telecommunication law, and it was actually formulated by the electric utilities and telecommunications, cell phones, all those. It was just rubber stamped by Congress. And in 1997, they came up with the standards. And we, we feel that around 100, 150, 200, something like that, the health effects start, or maybe even a little bit less. They set the standards at 10 million. And all these 5,000 studies that are out there, over 5,000 studies, prove that there's health effects at all these lower concentrations. And that's the problem. And in over 20 years, they've tried to correct that, but the lobbying is so strong. You'll say, well, no, it can't be that strong. The second highest lobbyist is the, is the pharmaceuticals. They're at about, 295 million. Guess what the telecommunication electrical utilities are at? They're at $479 million. And we just updated that in the book Exposed. We have the 2020 version and we listed all the lobbying dollars. So they spend more than the pharmaceuticals. And how many, how many senators do you have to convince? 51. And the money goes from their pocket to the senator's pocket and it might be a golf game, it might be a dinner, who knows, 
contributions to run your campaign, who knows what, what all that stuff is. But that's why there is a problem. And the standards at 10 million, I, I mean, there are countries around the world that are lowering it that maybe are, you know, 1,000 less than that. It's still an issue, but it's a lot less than that. Well, if you're saying that you're seeing health benefits at 100 to 150 to 200, the difference right. between 10 million and 9 million, 999,000 yeah, yeah, yeah. means nothing, right? Yeah, it's nothing. And, and there's something called the bioinitiative report. And around page 95, you can go out and just uh, bioinitiative.org or bioinitiative.org. Just go out there and around page 95, they show the level and then they show all the health effects at that level, you know, like cancer and brain cancer and things. And they have all the different levels and they're all in 100, 200, 500, you know, things like that. Not Nothing close to even 10 million. So what are some of the, the early stage health impacts? What are things that we should be looking at uh, as we're at home and, and seeing, hey, this might be an effect of the cell phone that I have or the router that I have behind me? Well, some of the things, I'll back up just a little bit. What we know, no one disagrees that it damages the DNA. It actually compromises the blood-brain barrier. So the blood-brain barrier is a barrier that as your blood goes through your brain with toxic metals or toxins or whatever, it actually doesn't allow those to go into your brain matter. But what they've proven is that just at, uh, at just two minutes using a cell phone, using this as, a, as my cell phone, sure. that it can actually start to open up with just as little as two minutes. It can start to open up. And the other thing is it weakens the immune system. So you might get a disease that you were never going to get. And that's one of the reasons we wrote this book because of COVID. You know, you want a strong immune system. Mm -hmm. And then once you have that disease, it's a lot harder to get rid of. So those are what's happening inside your body. And it affects every cell of your body, but you might not show symptoms yet. So, so on, on some of those studies, you said there were 5,000 studies. Was one of those studies in relation to here is a set level of radiation, here are the effects, and here's how long those effects last once the radiation is removed? Uh, were there things like that? Yeah, they, they basically talk about the amount of radiation there is. And in my book, I talk about DDT, dosage, uh -huh. distance, and time, a new DDT. So they say, here's the dosage. Here's the distance from that mammal, a mouse, or rat, or something like that. And here's the time they were exposed. And then they show the health effects. A national toxicology program in 1999 sent up, I think it was over 25 million to measure that, to measure this. And then in the about 2016, it was so damning they actually had to come out with the results earlier. They showed like uh, they were getting tumors on the heart in these animals and these mammals and things. And, you know, it's just, but, but the money's so big. But yes, all these studies show you the dosage, the distance, the amount of time, and then the health effects, what ha actually happened. And I, I mean, it's just cancer, health effects. And in, uh, in normally the PowerPoint I do has, I have six pages of diseases that can result from this. And let me just say, I don't believe every disease in the world is caused by EMF. We've had diseases for this many years. Right. But could it be the straw that broke the camel's back? Or could it be a contributory cause that's so much that, again, caused the problem? And just to give you a, an easy a little uh, um, a story, if you have a second. Sure. I was up. I was coming out of a house. So we do uh, inspections. We do audits and then remediations at the same time. We look at what the levels are and then we fix it. I spend 25% measuring and 75% fixing. So I'm, I finished one and I'm coming out of a house and the lady of the house told me, hey, you know, across the street, there's a girl that just had surgery on her face. I said, surgery on her face? She said, it was nine hours, nine hours of surgery. Fortunately, it was a huge tumor. It was benign. But she told me she slept right next to her cell phone. And most people don't know Again, cell phones, every six to 30 seconds, even if you're not on a phone, it tries to connect to the nearest cell tower, Bluetooth, or Wi-Fi device with radiation pulses thousands of times the safe level. So even if that young girl was sleeping in her bed, it was still irradiating her. 
And I said, I hope someone tells her that that's not good. You know, move it across the room as far as possible or, you know, in the bathroom, whatever. And you can still hear it. And I saw that lady about a year later and she said, you know, that girl that was 16? I said, yes, I remember that. Now she's 17. It grew back. Now it was cancerous. Now it was another nine hour surgery with plastic surgery. Mm. And I cannot prove that that cell phone caused that, but I can prove if she would have moved that cell phone across the room, you know, then that cell phone could never have caused that. And it is interesting, the side that she slept on, that's where the tumor was. And it grew back one year later. So you mentioned, just to back up just a little bit, you mentioned that we are probably seeing something like one quadrillion times more than than what our ancestors had seen before right. all these other devices. What is that saying about our children? And what is it doing to our children, especially since they're exposed to smart devices from birth? You know, they're constantly handed a, a tablet everywhere they go. They, they, uh, a two-year-old can operate the cell phone better than I can. What is, it, what is happening to them? Well, kids are growing. And again, I'm not a medical doctor. The kids are growing, their cells are dividing a lot quicker than, you know, when you're full grown. And so there's a chance of, of the DNA damages even more and more cells. And like a phone, if you hold your a phone up to an adult's head, the kid's head is not as wide. So the radiation penetrates even deeper into the head. And that's one of the issues that these young kids are getting it. And uh, I'll, I'll give you, it's, it's not a teenager, but uh, when I have my PowerPoint, and people can see it on my YouTube channel or go out to my, um, uh, to stopdoryelectricity.com, mm -hmm. what happens is I have a graph that talks colorectal cancer. So 65 and above, it's actually dropping, dropping. Oh, okay, you know, better diagnosis, better treatment, something like that. 20 to 49, it's going up. How could it be going up? Well, where does a guy carry this phone, carries it in his front pocket? Where does a lady carry this phone? In her back pocket, and every six to 30 seconds, it sends out radiation thousands of times the safe level. And I constantly measure a phone. I'll put my meter right on it or very close to it. It'll be 2.5 million in a phone. And that's going off every six to 30 seconds. And if you have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on and the cell, you know, the uh, wireless on, then you have three chances of getting that every six to 30 seconds. And that's one of the problems that we're seeing. Now, is it better nutrition? Is it, you know, all this other stuff? You know, maybe that does, but how can, when you're 65 and older, when your immune system is weaker, it's actually going down. And when you're 20 to 49, when your immune system is stronger, it's actually going up. What are some of the biggest offenders? And we're talking about cell phones. What are, I'm assuming they are one of the biggest offenders because we're, they're constantly on us. But what about some household appliances that are also in, incredibly dangerous? Probably routers. Routers are the biggest ones. And any, any device, any electronic device with Wi-Fi, wireless, or Bluetooth capable. Mm -hmm. So I was at the Mobile World Congress last year. It's the largest cell phone conference in LA. And a guy spoke and he said in his house, he has over 60 wireless devices hmm. and they're just spewing out radiation either every six to 30 seconds. But what a router does, it's multiple times a second. It doesn't even wait. It's sending it out. Same thing with the cordless phone, one of the worst things. And so on the solutions area, if you want to get a little bit into that. Sure. Absolutely. So what we do is we'll put that on a remote control cutoff. You buy it at one of the big box hardware stores. $9.50, you turn it off when you don't need it, and you only turn it on when you need it. And if you can't do that, like I go out to houses sometimes and need it on all day long, then at least at night, turn it off because they are powerful. The other thing you can do, uh, again, jumping a little bit into solutions, is they have fabric that I take with me that protects it, sort of like a little cage, and we just start wrapping the router. So I measure a router, and maybe it's 2.5 million, I'll get it down to maybe 2,500. And again, that's right on the router. You're not right on it. You're away from it. And it does drop on you as you go back. So those are uh, easy solutions. But the router, cordless phone based, you hang up the phone, 
a lot of people don't have landlines or cordless phone bases, right. but it goes in the U.S. continually, 24-7. So even if you hang up the phone, the base is still just like a router, huge numbers. So you're, you're, this wrap you're talking about on the router, does it affect the, the operation of the router, or is it just shielding the radiation? So what happens is they over-engineer all the routers. Uh -huh. They don't want to get a call, say, my router isn't working in my far bedroom. So they over-engineer these crazy, you know, hundreds of feet. You know, who knows how far they can go. And so what you do is you continually wrap it. And then what you do is you take your phone or your device in, a, in the farthest, most place of your home. And then you see if you still get a signal. If you're still getting a signal, then you put another wrap. I buy it in like eight foot by one foot. Mm -hmm. And then you put another wrap until you can just barely get the signal. And again, this one, we took from 2.5 million to 2,500. How much of a reduction is that? Like point yeah, that's zero. huge. Oh yeah, huge. And again, all of that makes a difference as long as you can get a signal, then do that. And so that's when you want to use a router. If people can hardwire, it's better, but the average person, you know, needs a Wi-Fi router now. And uh, but it, and then turn it off when you don't need it. That's most. And let me don't forget the animals. Where is your dog laying? Where is your cat laying? How close is it to your smart TV, to your router? And I the the uh, cancer in dogs has skyrocketed. I mean, it's just off the roof. Uh, I mean, it just went through the ceiling. And I have to think contributory cause. Again, again, let me just say that is, but you look at where most dogs are sleeping, they sleep right in front of the smart TV, the router might be there, mm -hmm. things. So, you know, always think about your animals when you're doing this. And um, that's radiation through the air. There's two types of radiation, radiation from the wire. Think of the power of three. There's electric, magnetic, and very electricity. Those are from the wires. And then there's three radiation through the air, Wi-Fi, wireless, and Bluetooth. So the problem is, is they wire houses differently than they did, you know, a long time ago. And that electric radiation comes out six to eight feet. So don't put your dog or your cat's little bed next to a wall. Move it closer to the center of the room. And I was at a house. The, uh, uh, the dog, uh, unfortunately, just passed away several months before I got there. And I measured where the dog was sleeping. And this is electric radiation, which uses uh -huh. a little bit different, you know, different, it's volts per meter. I don't want to get in, but different units where uh, we want you at about one or two or three, something like that. And it was at 40. So again, it was like really high. And I just moved it about this far, you know, about three or four feet into this, toward the center of the room. You know, you got a chair there or something like that. And it dropped it to like two or three. Let me ask it, you this. It, yes. is, is it... There are devices that you can purchase at Best Buy, and essentially they will turn your your home wiring, uh, your home electrical wiring into an Ethernet cable, right? You you plug you plug it in, and then you plug the Ethernet cable into that, and then it turns the house wiring. You just have to have another one of those plugs, and you plug it in someplace else. Are those better than utilizing Wi-Fi, or is it basically this a wash? No, no, tons more better. Okay. Tons more better. And the only thing you need to do is, uh, again, from the wires, there's electric, magnetic, and dirty electricity. Mm -hmm. That creates dirty electricity. So you need to buy a filter, a dirty electricity filter, to knock down that dirty okay. electricity that cause. But that's, it, it's like a Ethernet cable. And, right. And the nice thing is you can put multiple in your house. You can put one over here, one at the island when you're, you know, and you mm -hmm. just put your device in and... Those are great things. They also have another one that uses your cable wires. So your cable wiring's in your home. Right. But but sometimes people don't have as many cable outlets where they want to hook up. So the electric works well. And just go to uh, TP-Link or Netgear. Make sure they're one of those. And those are real standard type guys. And just buy that. And do buy a dirty electricity filter uh, on my website or just type it in. Get either a GreenWave or a Stetzer. And those are those two will knock it down. Awesome. Uh, so you don't, yeah, but that's a great solution. That's that's like you know one one hundredth of the radiation. You would get. Yeah, because I I did that in my house. I great. I just but I had done it more for because I wanted a consistent um, internet access. You know, these were for quote unquote your smart televisions. 
you don't want to, you know, any, anything in terms of the Wi-Fi, any, any bit of oscillation, you want it to be just a constant stream. So I did that just to have a better, it was like basically being wired in, but I'm glad to hear that that actually, um, is helpful as well. And those don't cost all that much when you think about what the long-term of health effects might be, you know, it's really kind of worth the cost to me. That's why I wanted and, to ask and, you that. Yeah. And the nice thing is you can take that little box, they're about 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah. And and if you're not using at the Island, you can take that one little box and plug it into your bedroom. If you don't want to buy another set. Right. Pretty easy. And the main thing is when you do that and you plug in your laptop or your phone or your iPad or whatever, you've got to turn airplane mode on, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. Because if you don't do it, then the machine, uh, the electronic device will constantly spew out radiation trying to connect to the Wi-Fi. You can't see anything. So that's it. And in my tips, you can download this for free uh, on my website, 10 ways to lower your radiation. So we talk about uh, turning airplane mode off and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm sorry, airplane mode on, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. So just make sure you do that whenever you hardware, because when you put in a cable 99.9% .9 of the time, it does not turn off the wireless in your particular device. Before we get into the strategies to, to reduce it, because I, I think we want to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, I did want to ask you first, you know, your, your book was called um, Expose the Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself including the dangers of 5G. And that's what I wanted to ask about was, was 5G. And I want to ask that because I just so happened to notice that there is a new 5G uh, transformer that, had, that has gone up not too far from where my house is, where I live. I have heard that there, the, the, health benefit, or the health impacts of the 5G are substantial and that we don't really know at this point what the long-term effects of having those 5Gs every 200 feet are going to be. Have you uh, had any, seen any research about that? Or do you have any insight into just how harmful those are? And what's the difference between 5G and 4G that came before it? So uh, the G stand for generation. Okay. Uh, we had two, three, four, and now we have 5G. Just a gen, gen, uh, different uh, generation and different architecture. In every generation, they've gone faster and they've done more radiation with that. So that's the main difference between 4G and 5G is that it's higher radiation, so you can download your stuff faster. It can't go quite as far, uh, depending upon what level of 5G it is. But let me just say, on your router, you'll see a 5G. That doesn't sound for 5G. It stands for just... Um, uh, it's not generation, it's actually, they use 5G on a router. And on a router, what it means is, is 5.8 gigahertz. Okay. So the G stands for gigahertz and the 5G is five you know, gigahertz. It's actually 5.8 gigahertz. So your router uh, doesn't have 5G. So the ramifications is, it's just, we had 2G, 3G, 4G, and now we just have another layer. And the other layer is three, four, five, times more the problems depending upon how fast, how much more of a connection you have. So the faster it is, the more radiation that's coming at you. And, and it's a problem that in about 1990, uh, 2018, they, they used to have to put about a cell tower from a company about a mile apart. So here's a mile, here's another mile, and halfway in between, you're about a half a mile from each, but about a mile apart. They needed to put it closer because since you're moving this much more data, so think of a big pipe. You can only move so much water, it takes so much force, but an itsy bitsy pipe, you can throw it a lot farther. And those are what 4G is. They're smaller frequencies, but with these huge frequencies, they can't send it as far. So that's why in 19, in actually 2018, they got a regulation passed that said they could put it every 250 feet. So every three to 12 houses, and they're starting to put it on our lamppost. So if you see right. a cylinder on a lamppost, a foot and a half to two feet tall, and then if there's boxes underneath, so if they have boxes underneath, the cylinder on top is the 4G, and then the little boxes underneath, they're little panels, and they have boxes underneath that, then that's the 5G component. And almost most antennas now being put up have a 4G component and a 5G, because the 4G is still handling all the voice and text. 
5G is now currently, as we speak, in 2020, uh, it's only handling the data. So they've got to provide voice and text and then the data at this point. So do they, are, are, are 2G, 3G, I don't even know if those things exist. Yeah. Do, are those still being pumped out or were those retired and now all we're really getting bombarded with is the 4G and the 5G? Uh, two, 2G is still there. I heard that they're starting to retire it, but 3G will be around for a long time. So they ne- normally keep about three generations running you know, now that they got to 3G, they could have 1G, 2G, and 3G. Uh-huh. So when they went to 4G, they got rid of 1G when they... So there's about, just think about approximately three generations. So 5G, 4G, 3G, and they're start to retire the 2G. But, but, the, but compared to the radiation on 2G and the radiation on 5G, it's not a swap. Right. It's like so much more than 2G than 2G is. Yeah, it's it's just a huge problem, and and it's proximity. So in the old place, hey, there there's a cell tower a mile away. Okay, right. I'm going to build my house here, and, and I know, hey, they're not going to put a, a cell tower real close to me. But now every 250 feet on a lamp post, and they actually have them on the underneath of manholes. I've seen them. I've seen a where they put it underneath. Of, you'll say, hey, I don't have anything outside my house. Now they put it underneath a manhole, you know, in the street. So. They're hiding these things. They're trying to get approved that your neighbor could actually put an antenna in their attic. You don't even know about, but it's it's a cell phone antenna. It's a 5G antenna. You don't even see it. And what the is, reason they can do that is on 5G, there's three uh, frequency spectrums. So there's the low, the medium, and the high. The real high, which is one of the worst. I mean, it's all bad. Don't get me wrong. Right, right. But it has a harder time. It doesn't go as far. And it has a harder time penetrating walls and, and windows. Windows are not too bad, but it's the walls. So what the cell phone, so they have all three spectrums. And what they do is they would rather run everything through the lowest spectrum of 5G because they can send it a lot farther and it's not quite as fast. But if, hey, if I come up to you and I say, hey, your cell phone's five times faster, hey, you're a happy guy instead of 20 times faster. So they're trying to do that because... They don't want to spend as much on tower equipment and antennas. They can run everything through. Mid-range goes not quite as far, and it's basically more radiation. And then the highest range is basically goes least amount of time and or least distance and has the highest radiation. And they normally, the really high stuff they're putting in, like apartment buildings, uh, places like a, uh, like a football stadium and things like that, we have a concentration of people where you've got to move so much data and it's not uh, very long distances. You know, you're in a foot, football right. stadium. So again, they're playing around with all those spectrums because as you go up, you'll say, well, why don't they just do everything 5G? Well, they have to put up more antennas. Uh, the big 5G, the highest you know frequency, it's like 20 gigs and above. And then uh, it costs more for electricity. So they're spending 30% more to run these towers in electricity and it comes down to bucks. And then they actually have special cooling systems they have to, because the more electricity you use, like a computer room, the more heat that's generated. So again, uh, but it's all bad. And the, any of the 5G has more radiation than the 4G. Have you heard, uh, maybe stepping into the world of conspiracy theory here a little bit, but um, sure. have you heard anything about, and I've, I've had some people that I've talked to, I've read some things, saying that this 5G impacts, these quote-unquote 5G sickness, uh, either it may not necessarily mimic those of the coronavirus, but it may significantly weaken the immune system to the point where it, it, it amplifies the impact of anything that just kind of happens to be floating around there. Have you heard anything about that, that there was a, the, the, a correlation between the, fi- the implementation of 5G and um, the coronavirus? Probably Wuhan is the biggest thing. A month before they let know, uh, the Chinese let know that there was a problem, you know, a month or two. In, I think it was October of 2019, they turned on 10,000 5G antennas in Wuhan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, so if I go to you, Pete, and I say, hey, go down and get 100 x-rays of your abdomen. I said 100 x-rays of my, that can't be good for me. So this is less, but again, it's just so much more than we've had. 
And, and with that, they have different pulsing, different what they call modulations. And some scientists actually says it's the modulation that's really hurting us because we never had modulation before about uh, 2000. Uh, the modulation really started in 1998 when they mm -hmm. went from analog phone to digital phone. I think 98, 1997. And it was so much of a problem. Arthur and Furstenberg, who wrote The Invisible Rainbow, the history of all this stuff from the very first electric to currently, but he was in New York City. He started to get sick and he sent out something in a little magazine and said, hey, does anyone on this date, I think it was November 1st or something like that, 1998, I think it was, anyone get sick? And all of a sudden he started getting a flood of people because they turned it on in New York City on that particular month. And the body wasn't used to it. Right. All of a here it is, couldn't adjust. And again, that's anecdotal that it really happened. I, I mean, it happened, but you know, was it was that a correlation versus a causation? That's what we always have to look in this. But probably Wuhan's the best example is that they turned on ten thousand antennas a month or so before all this stuff started ramping up. You know, it, it just seems it it seems so dangerous to me that that they're not that there is not this uh, bigger concern. Because to your point, you were talking about smoking and the um, the case studies on smoking being dangerous. And you have 5,000 studies that show that this type of radiation is potentially incredibly dangerous. And I understand money. I get I get that there's a lot of money to be made, but you're you're killing yourself for the money. I mean, and you literally are, what, at what point do we say, okay, the amount of money that's being made isn't worth uh, the, the irreparable damage that we're doing to you know, the people who live here? I, that it seems so at odds to me. I mean, I, maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm being a little too uh, pie in the sky. Maybe I'm not uh, being realistic enough. But it just seems like there should be somebody or there would be somebody uh, that is, you know, from at the, at the mountaintop preaching to the fact that, you know, this type of prolonged exposure is causing cancer. Maybe, it, I don't know if, it, if there's sterilization. That's what it seems like to me, that people would be getting sterilized. We may, we may have a, a decline in birth rates, things like that. We are essentially eradicating ourselves through, um, through radiation. I, I don't know if you've seen anything like that. It just, it just boggles my mind that, we're, that there's nobody really sounding the alarm on five and until like now, now we're starting to see, we're starting to see people right. who are really right. going into this five G, but they're just being labeled conspiracy theorists and brushed right. brushed right. to the side. That's that's the you know that is the easy rubber stamp now. If if you have a differing opinion, it's a conspiracy. You're a conspiracy theorist, and we don't have to take you seriously. Right. Deal, yeah, we don't have to deal with it. So let me just take you back to smoking. Yeah. So smoking night, and I have these timelines in the book, and with more detail. Smoking, 1929, cancer and lung, uh, cancer, lung cancer from smoking. 70 years later, they settled. Yeah. 70 years. So BPA, we heard about BPA, probably not good for you. They knew it was bad in the 1930s. Lead in paint, 1950s. They didn't ban it till the 70s. Lead in gasoline, they knew in 1922. Again, didn't ban that until the early 90s. Uh, we had DDT, they knew in the 50s that DDT was bad, but they didn't ban it until the 70s or 80s. Mm -hmm. And I just heard recently there's still two countries that are still using DDT. So that's, uh, what, 70 years on that yeah. one? And the biggest one of all, again, smoking. So that's what's happened. And now we have so much more money. So you had one, you know, you had the tobacco guys. And in my book, I detail, you've got electronic manufacturers, You've got uh, telecommunication people. You've got all these people making, I mean, it's in the trillions of dollars now. And I had a colleague in, in California that went, does something similar to I do, uh, what I do. And he went to a house and was a former, either former or current um, cell phone representative, you know, uh, VP or something like that, VP, executive mm -hmm. VP. And she said, I've seen the doctor. He said, what documents are you talking about? I've seen what happens when we start to get sued and what we'll do. And they'll follow the whole thing that smoking did. You deny, you deny, you deny. Once you, when it's proven that, oh, it does cause smoke, it's so small, it doesn't affect. And you just keep going. And there's just a whole 
thing. It's just the money is just so huge. And, and I think there are some people who say, you know, I, I've used it. I haven't fallen over dead right now. But let me tell you, the iPhone came out in late 2007. Right. The iPhone, the first iPhone, from that year to the current year, every single year in the U.S., their, the sperm rates have dropped every single year. And so right now in a developing country like China, I mean, like in India or whatever type of country it is, they're now 49% of what they were decades ago, the fertility rate. And, well, and, and yeah. where do you carry that phone? And think about the sperm. That's one thing they can regenerate. But how about a lady who carries that phone in her back pocket and it's going off every six to 30 seconds? That's why we come out with anything they'll read. You know, only want to read 10 things. Look at this. Only mm -hmm. want to look at one minute video. Look at that. Want to look at 99 tips? Please look at this. And then you want the whole backstory, the collusion, you know, everything else, plus solutions. All of these have solutions. And here's the reason why we're in it. It's just money, money, money. And unlike smoking, so is smoking pleasant? I mean, does it smell and everything else? Yeah. No. And most people say, you know, that's bad. We run our whole life on smartphones and everything. Mm -hmm. No one wants to give it up. And we don't want them to give it up. I have a smartphone. I just show you, here's how you... Here's the things you do to reduce over 90% of your exposure. And that's what we're here to do because the average guy is never going to chuck their phone. They're going to use it. But here's how you can reduce your exposure over 90%. Yeah, I, I, I understand why smoking took so long because most of the population still didn't smoke. So, you know, people are dying from it, but not me. So I'm not worried about it. You know what I mean? I can understand why the worry isn't there. In this case, like you said, we all have the cell phone. We all have all of these devices, every one of us. Children, you know, at 12 years old, 9 years old, 10 years old have cell phones. They sleep with them. You know, they're on their faces, like, you, like you're saying. Um, so, and, and it has not been that long. You're right. Maybe it's been only been 12, 15 years or so now that the iPhone's been around, and we've really had that all-in-one thing in your pocket that you can do everything on. But it is a, a risk-reward, pro-con scenario. You know, you, you run your entire life out of it. And what are you willing to to sacrifice before you have to give it up? Um, so let, let's talk then. Let's let's go into what I can do because you've scared me sufficiently. And I, and I will can say I, to you. Can I just talk about babies real quick? Yeah, go ahead. So I go to the Consumer Electronics Show every year in Las Vegas. Hopefully it'll be this year in January. You know, hard to say. Mm -hmm. and, and so in the back of the books, we have a comprehensive list by room on anything that might be in a nursery that could cause a problem in a bedroom, in a kitchen. And so people, even if they don't have a meter, they can tell just you know, a little checkbox. Oh, that's bad. I didn't know that. Let's unplug it so it's not going when I don't need it. But I, I got the top three. So the worst three that I ever saw. And let me just say the first one was it was a Bluetooth baby box. So now the child is hugging a miniature cell phone power so the parent can see how much is in the bottle and what temperature it is. It's just going off. You'll say it can't get worse than that. That's one of the worst things I heard. Right. It just got worse. And again, if someone wants to see my PowerPoint, they can see this. They have Wi-Fi diapers. So now you're taking the cell phone and you're wrapping it around a baby's abdomen and now it's going off all the time. How so they know if the baby is well. So what did they do for centuries, thousands of years? They didn't right. have, but their smartphone tells it. And then you'll say, it can't get worse than that. And then I put up the next slide. It's a pacifier, a Bluetooth pacifier to tell the temperature of the baby. Now the baby is literally sucking on a cell tower. How can it get worse than that? And I don't even see how that is more convenient. I don't understand why, how they're thinking that that's more convenient. Um, uh, the mother's at work, uh, you know, at work or at the mall or the father, and hey, I'm getting a beep on my cell phone. The baby's temperature <laughs> raised. You know, okay. Who knows? I mean, for thousands of years, we, anyway. So oh, that's man. it's not even just the smartphones. Now it's all these devices that are communicating to your smartphone to tell you your entire life. And each of those devices are receivers and transmitters 
of radiation that is harmful to your health. So I, I did want to say before we get into the strategies that we you know we we've talked once before and and I have I did get myself a a timer and it's one of those little you know it's a plug-in timer and you can you can set it for you know it would shut things off at this time sure. and it s starts things so I actually do shut off our router at midnight every night and then I start I turn the router back on at six thirty uh, because I work remotely now with with um, COVID I work remotely so. I know I get up and I start around seven. It kicks on at six thirty. It's ready for me by the time I walk into the office. So I will say that you have made an impact on me. Wonderful. But for those of us that have not heard these yet, can you give us some strategies at home that we can do to protect ourselves every day? Sure. And again, you don't have to take notes. You can just go to a website and just download this for free. And uh, so one of the first things is step away from the microwave. So I have a one minute video and I show you with a meter how far I'm away till it finally drops into the green area. So once you turn your microwave on, if you use, still use a white microwave, some people don't, mm -hmm. but get the heck away from the microwave. And in the video, you'll see I'm 40 feet away, two rooms, three rooms and a couple of hallways. And that's how far it takes. So again, when you hit it and don't forget your animals, where's your cat, where's your dog? How close are they to the microwave? So please get them out. And I've never measured a microwave that was ever safe. I've so, never measured one microwave ever safe. So I just have to say this then. So you're saying that you that the safe distance from a microwave is 40 feet away. Based on my microwave with the meter. Uh -huh. So maybe in another microwave, it's 35, another one, it's 50. So again, the point is, don't sit there right. and watch your food cook. Get as far away as you can. And, you know, we're not living in a desert with a little, you know, a little uh, canvas tent, and a little kerosene language, you know, kerosene lamp. You've got to be realistic. But when you put it on and you'll say, how could that be a problem? So I'm, I'm down in Las Vegas at a, a community uh, south of it. And there's a nurse there. And, and I'm saying, uh, you know, she, you know, I talked about this. She said, uh, you know, microwave. And I mentioned that. And she said, uh, too late. I said, too late. What do you mean? My husband sits in front of the microwave and constantly looks. He already mm -hmm. has a tumor at the height of the microwave right on his abdomen. I can't prove that caused it, but I can prove if he would have stepped away from it, that microwave could have never caused that. So again, uh, just turn it on and get as far away as you can. And uh, our microwave, so that's the only thing I would do. My microwave is at eye level. It's, it's above it's directly above the stove, right? So they, that's right. where they mount them now. In a lot of new houses, they mount them directly above the stove, right, right. there at eye level. I'm 6'3", it's right there. I'm looking there right at it, right there in my face. And right. uh, that's, that's, uh, that's distressing. Okay, okay. Yeah, but, but Pete, we can't change anything about the past, but we sure can improve the future. When I go out to house, that's what I emphasize. Let's emphasize on solutions right now. I can't change the past, but we can sure improve the future. All right. So uh, another thing what I would do is I would move, this is probably the biggest thing. And in the new book right here, we put it as number one, move your cell phone and everything else off your nightstand. 19 out of 29 people charge your cell phone on their nightstand. So remember, most people think it's a brick. It's just laying there at night. Every six to 30 seconds tries to contact the nearest a uh, uh, cell phone tower, the nearest Bluetooth or Wi-Fi device, and just constantly every six to 30 seconds. So move that off. Someone says, okay, I'll turn that off. But what happens is the wire that you plug in, there's three types of radiation from that wire, electric radiation, magnetic radiation, dirty electricity. So move that whole thing either across the room and in your bathroom. And I use mine for alarm and it's in my bathroom mm -hmm. and I have everything turned off, it's charging. And in the when I get up in the morning, I can hear the alarm or something like that. So again, do that. Some people have emergency calls, you have to take it. So they have to leave it on. So move it as far away as you can. And I guarantee you in the middle of the night, when that thing rings in a dead silence, it will wake you up. So please, if you only do one thing today, take your cell phone and move it off your nightstand as far away as you can. And definitely so, don't charge it on the side of your bed, which I know also no, no. a lot of people will just put the on the charger and it's laying there next to them in bed. Yeah, not on the floor next to the bed, nowhere. Just move it away. 
And even we, we say clocks, don't put it, you leave a clock on there. If you need a clock at night, put it on the other side of the bedroom. So, you know, you wake up and say, hey, what time it is or something like that. So try to move everything off your nightstand. The cell phone is the worst of all the things. Clock's probably second. And, but again, we talk about it in the 99 tips that okay. didn't get the book exposed. So you can get some more detail there. And uh, so the other thing I would do is, is when you use your cell phone, use it in speaker mode as much as possible. So uh, I know you can't do it 100% of the time, but just moving it away gives you some relief. And again, just move it as far away as you can. Uh, one of the worst things are the little pods that they put in their ears now. So, you know, the wireless pods. Right, yeah. So, like two years ago, uh, Apple, I think, sold 22 million of them or something like that. So when I go out to the shows, I'm collecting information, you know, new gadgets, new wireless stuff to put in my book to update it. And I, I really don't advertise what I do, you know. But if someone asks me, I'm, I'm truthful, I'll tell them. Mm -hmm. So I told the lady, she asked me, and uh, I said, well, I measure, uh, you know, a radiation. Then I show people how to resolve it. And she said she had some pods in her ear. I measured it. Remember how we talked about 100, 250, you know, you know, somewhere in that range. Right. 178,000 right on her ear. And she had the second one in. Mm -hmm. So again, those things, try never to use it, try a wire, you know, get something that has a wire, you know, hooked up to your cell phone, maybe if you're going to talk on it. And then if someone can't live without it, put it in your ear, use it for a short period of time, then immediately take it out. And hopefully there's an on and off switch and get that away. Hearing aids, one of the worst things, they're putting Bluetooth in all the hearing aids. And you might say, well, what type of a problem is this? I was in my chiropractors and uh, I did his office and he said you know there's a lady in here that thought her wireless you know uh, device you know uh, was caught you know her ear was causing her a problem and she had melanoma I said melanoma I said well was it on the opposite side she only had one he said no it wasn't on the opposite side it was on the same side I said well was it above or below the device it was right underneath the device was the melanoma I can't prove it, it caused it, but I can prove if she would have taken that out, put it away, then it, no way that could have caused that. So again, watch out for your hearing aids. All the guys have these hearing aids and they link to their phone and it's just Bluetooth. And every six to 30 seconds, that's going off in their ear, even if they're not making a call. So, and when I go out to a house, I have a good, better and best solution whatever works mm -hmm. for the person and whatever, as you mentioned, risk, whatever risk you're willing to take. So, but again, that's one thing I would do, always use speaker phone. Uh, the, other, the other thing is when you're carrying your phone on your body, uh, always do airplane mode on, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. It cuts off all the radiation. Safe place to now carry it. And then if you, every so often you need to check, just take it out, turn airplane mode back uh, off, and then you can see any messages, voicemails, who called you, couldn't get through to you. And then you can just call them at that point. Mm -hmm. But make sure you don't carry it in your pocket or in your pocket, back pocket, with all those things on. They're just so terrible, I can't tell you. You'll say, how terrible? Well, we were at a, a workshop in Southern California. We're at a firefighter's house. And he was very sensitive. And we we're going through the house, making adjustments, measuring, making adjustments. He brought out his 19-year-old son. Carol, son, what's this is about? He said, well, here's my 19-year-old son. Okay, you know, and I forgot his name. He said, he just had a hip replacement. How could a 19-year-old son have a hip replacement? Wow. When he was a freshman, he took his cell phone and he put it in his front pocket. He kept it there for four years through high school. Remember, every six to 30 seconds, it's going off thousands of times of safe level radiation. And then he graduated shortly after that. He was hiking behind his house, jumped off a little rock, broke his hip. They rushed him to emergency, put him up on the table, and then the ner uh, the surgeon couldn't believe her eyes. She, right where he had that cell phone, there was a huge tumor. So the body trying, probably trying to protect itself. She went through the tumor. She could then see the bone. She could stick her finger where the bone used to be. The bone was dissolved. So, how how much more 
I mean, and you may not know this, the answer to this question. Sure. How much more expensive would the phone have to be for them to put a little bit better level of shielding protection in the phone itself? I know that they try to make them, they're works of art. I mean, they're incredible. Yeah. They're paper thin. They're beautiful. Um, what would it, but I mean, they're already a thousand dollars. So what, how much more, well, how much more would it cost to simply put a better level of uh, radiation protection or some radiation protection on the device itself? Well, what, what happens is you have physics involved. Mm -hmm. So to communicate from phone A to tower B, you have to have so much level of radiation just to get there and back. Okay. Okay. That, that's, there's just no way to no do way it. around it. Throw out a wire and, you know, plug it in. So you could lower it. But one of the issues, that's why I don't recommend cases. So think about a case. You put a case between a phone, right, over mm -hmm. a phone, and you have the front, and then you have the back, and then you have four edges of the phone. If you have a case on a phone and you can receive a call, guess what's happening? The radiation is leaking out somewhere. So my question is, if you have a phone and you have a case and it's protecting you, you have it here, what part of your body don't you care about? This part, this part, this part, this part, or below? Because it's got to leak out somewhere. And sometimes on phones, when you put a case on it, it's like going from four bars to two bars or one bar. Mm -hmm. It actually has to work harder to connect, and it actually puts out a bigger radiation signature. Okay. So what we are, what personally, I, I mean, I know guys who have phone cases and things like that, but the average person thinks when I put a case on, it's completely safe. And it's got to leak out somewhere. And when it leaks out, what part of wherever you carry it, you carry about this part, this part, wherever the part that's not guarded. So that's the problem. Once you start to constrict or start to put shielding on a phone, mm -hmm. you know, let's say internally at the factory, then again, it's going to try to push out. And there's probably now five or six at least that many antennas in a phone. They got a you know 3G antenna. They got a 4G. It's a 5G. They got a 5G antenna. Then they have a Wi-Fi antenna. They have a Bluetooth antenna. And all these antennas are trying to communicate with the device. And if they're constricted, then they actually put out uh, a number of them can actually put out more radiation. So so that's the problem. And so that's why on the router, what I recommend is they engineer it so high to go so far. You can take this fabric that you can wrap it around. Mm -hmm. SLT.co is a good place to buy it, less EMF. And then you can just wrap it around and get exactly the level you need. And if you can cut it from 2.5 million to 2,500, I mean, yeah. there you go. You can still use your device. And so uh, what you could do is use Wi-Fi calling in your house, knock down the Wi-Fi, and then turn airplane mode on and Bluetooth off. And then that way you're only Wi-Fi calling. You're not getting the big signal to the antenna. So that's one way. And you reduced your Wi-Fi so much. Okay. Um, well, just uh, we ha we're coming right up here against the, the hour here. So sure. uh, so if I'm seeing correctly, don't charge on the nightstand. Give it six to eight feet. Put something in the in the bathroom or something far away from you. Nothing on and the nightstand. As far away as you can. And normally, normally I don't use feet on this. Uh -huh. I measure a flip phone. It's a lot less than a smartphone. And every year the phones get stronger. Right. So I always say as far as you can. So at night. when you're carrying it, airplane mode, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi off, turn off airplane a router at on, night. Blue, yep. Um, airplane mode on, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi off. No on the Bluetooth headphones. You know, they're right there in your ear. They're pu pulsating 175,000. Uh, that's, that's, that's an incredible amount. Use the speakerphone when, when possible. And and I think uh, I I might have helped out here a little bit. Get go ahead, go out to your local hardware store, your local electronic store, and get yourself one of those those plugs that allows you to turn the house's electrical wiring into an Ethernet cable. And then that yeah. you, you will not have to use the Bluetooth throughout the house as much. You can you can move those those plugs around the house if you want to use it for your PlayStation in in the far in, other side of the room. You can just unplug it, plug it in there, and, and you have an Ethernet versus drawing wireless all the way across the house to do that. Um, so, I, you know, thanks, Bill, so much for joining the show. Sure. And like I mentioned, you know, to me, it's a really important episode. And I have I've made some changes in my life after we just talked, you know, prior to the show here today. Um, 
And so I definitely got something out of it. So once again, the book is Exposed, The Electronic Sickening of America and How to Protect Yourself, including the dangers of 5G and smart devices. And then the new book is Quick and Easy EMF Guide, 99 Tips to Lower Harmful Electromagnetic Radiation. The website is StopDirtyElectricity.com. And you can get those books again on Amazon as well. And you had mentioned uh, before we go, you had also mentioned that they are doing a replay of the EMF conference. Is that correct? Yeah, the EMF Health Summit. It's going uh, June 27th through July 3rd. But then uh, I know this will be aired a little bit after that. Mm -hmm. But on the weekend, shortly after that, uh, they'll they'll actually do it. Uh, They'll replay it on the weekend. And the other thing I do is if someone has some personal questions they have, uh, if you go to my website, stopdearelectricity.com, I have free 15-minute consultation to anyone, you know, if they want to discuss some personal things, you know, I mean, you know, in their house and, hey, what about this? I'd be happy to do that for free. We're just trying to get the message out to as many people as as I can. And and if I can just finish on one thing. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. So with this book, I was speaking, uh, I was a featured speaker at the 47th Annual Cancer Convention. And uh, so I'm signing books. The book just came out about two years ago. And a lady comes up to me and says, she stops and pauses and says, "Um, you know, I read your book. I said, oh, great, great. Find a lot of good stuff. She said, you know what? I break up a little bit this. Your book save my daughter's life. Mm. And when you hear that, it's just a huge motivation to continue to do that. When Absolutely. Someone, something like that. So again, take as much. And I'm just happy if people just do a couple of four tips. But if you want to do more, that's great. Because that one tip that you do might save your daughter's or your son's life. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and again, I, I, I agree with you. I've taken some of those tips to heart myself at my in my own home and i absolutely recommend that to to everybody else out there um anything else that that i know you just came out with this brand new book here were there any other um public and uh appearances that you're doing i don't know if you're even still doing those right now if they're if we're still a little bit too far away with with covid to to be doing yeah. those yet yeah yeah covid is sort of knocked out most of those. So I was interviewed last week in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. radio station. Um, so, uh, and then I'm going to be, a gentleman from France is going to interview me in early January. And so that he'll put that on his website. It's called Electra, uh, electrasense.com. So electrasense.com. Uh, Lloyd Burrell. So that'll be up. We'll be talking about the new book mm-hmm. and uh, things about that. And also I'll be talking about how to pick the right dirty electricity filter. So what do you do with all this dirty electricity that's caused by all these wireless Wi-Fi and electronic devices? So I'll be talking about how to pick the best filters. What happens if you have solar panels? What happens if you have a variable speed power mode, uh, power uh, pump? Uh-huh. Uh, and then just different things concentrating uh, a lot on dirty electricity at this point. And we'll be talking about other things as well. But if you're concerned, if you ever wondered, is solar safe or is it not? You know, what do you what do you think about that? And if I have it, what do I do to fix it? And then just what you can do for your dirty electricity in your entire house. So we'll be talking about that as well as a lot of other subjects. How how do we do as a as a nation compared to other countries across the the world? So our levels at 10 million are the highest. Okay. There's no question. There's no one even higher. Other countries have dropped that by 10, you know, one tenth that, you know, one hundredth of that. So other countries are starting to drop that. Probably the biggest thing is you have countries like France. They don't like, uh, I think it's uh, first or second grade through preschool. They can't have any Wi-Fi in the school. Uh, so there's a number of countries based mm-hmm. on the top kids that they're actually eliminating they don't even let them have it. And that's one of the biggest problems. I have a questionnaire I send to people before I come to their house. And one of the things is, is your child in a Wi-Fi school? And almost every school has Wi-Fi now. And that's one of the biggest problems that they're just, and then everyone has devices. And like France, again, uh, I think if you're in high school, anywhere from high school down to whatever age it is that they can have cell phones, 
is they can't use it in the school. They have to put it in a box when they come in. They don't even get it during breaks, and then you pick it up on the way out after school. Okay. So the other the other countries which are smaller are tend to doing better, but the lobbying dollars. When you have talked about four hundred and seventy four hundred and seventy nine million dollars in the FCC for the cell phone lobbyists and pharmaceuticals at two uh, two seventy five or two ninety five rather. I, I mean I mean the lobbying dollars are just are just so huge. Mm-hmm. So, unf- and so that's why it's not going to change. What can we do to fix it? I mean, I hope it changes. I hope they, you know, not put up very many 5G antennas. But assuming that doesn't happen, what personally can you do in your space to fix what you have? Absolutely. And it, it sounds like there are a lot of opportunities for improvement. I, I was just interested about places like Japan, which which seems incredibly modern to me. A lot of uh, electric uh, radiation seems to me would be going on. That's why I wanted to know how we were doing in comparison to to other first world countries, places like that. But so, but I I, I get why we would be number one, right? It's it's not a that's not a contest I want to win. Like you know, you want to win most things. I don't want to win that. Yeah, and 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 we didn't even talk about the digital uh, addiction part. So Korea playing these games, South Korea, mm-hmm. they have for a hundred. 100 centers that are detoxing kids from digital addiction hmm. over that little itsy bitsy country. It's such a problem that kids will play these games into the night Absolutely. on their phone and they're just addicted to the phone. And what we talk about in an expose is uh, the first book. We talk about how they put a variable response ratio in there, a reward ratio, where you never know when you're going to get a reward. And then when you get it, it's sort of like a slot machine. I, I live in Las Vegas. Yeah. And, you know, they work with psychologists on how to keep people addicted and holding the phone and holding the tablet. And we hadn't even talked about the addiction. And then memory loss in Sweden, they had over 700 people last year where they noticed the memory was a lot less the more screen time they had. So the more screen time they had, the less... Uh, the memory was not as good. So again, there's just so many aspects. And I'm not saying throw all this away, Mm -hmm. but the new book and quick and easy tips, we talk about limit the time that kids are on. Sort of like in the old days where someone limited, you know, the amount of time on a TV. Right. And uh, so just smart parenting type of things. All right. Um, Bill Cadwallader, thank you once again for joining the, the program. Once again, that's StopDirtyElectricity.com. You can find everything that we've been talking about tonight, all of his uh, tips and techniques to protect yourself and your family and your home uh, and and reduce some of this uh, radiation that we're constantly bombarded with every day. Once again, Bill, I appreciate you spending time with me, and uh, hopefully we can talk to you again. Great. Thanks, Pete. I sure appreciate it. Thank you. So once again... Uh, that's Mr. Bill Cadwallader. We're talking dirty electricity, and um, yeah, that that it worries me. And when we're talking about, you're starting to see impacts on people at 100 to 200, you know, you know units, and our phone alone is doing, you know, two million, and it's pulsating every six to 30 seconds, and you then you. That's just for the signal itself. Then you're also throwing in the Bluetooth and, and uh, you know, the Wi-Fi. Those things are all kind of compounding. And it, it is a scary thought, and it seems hopeless to me. I'll be honest with you. It's when he's telling me that we still have 3G, we still have 4G, now we have 5G, and they're just, com, com, you know, just kind of constantly piling on top of each other, and we are just 100% of the day bombarded by this, this radiation causing tumors, causing, uh, you know, cancers, causing ADD, causing memory loss. Uh, what impacts long-term will this industrial revolution, will this technology revolution have on us? And why don't we care more? Why don't we care more now that we're able to see, you know, how fast is too fast? How fast is too fast on your phone? Right now, I can. it's not like it used to be with America Online where I would click on the button and I'd have to wait for the rah, rah, rah for 15 seconds. And then slowly you would see the screen start to uh, download. It's instantaneous now. I have more computing power in my pocket 
than the Apollo astronauts had in 1969. It's instantaneous. I can't, I personally don't see the reason for having to go even stronger, even more powerful with the 5G. I know I've, I've read and heard others speak that it's for AI, autonomous vehicles, uh, things like that, things that are going to be driving themselves that you absolutely have to have um, immediate data transfer. You cannot have a lag when your self-driving car is driving. It, suddenly you have a, a slight freeze in, in the data that's coming across and people are dying, people are crashing. <clears throat> so I can understand the need in some cases that, you know, things like that, when we're talking AI or, or self-driving cars, they need a consistent, constant stream of reliable data coming in. I don't think that I need that. I don't need that for my phone. So we're not at that point yet. And then even when we are at that point, I'm sorry, I think that there should be an opportunity for us to direct that specifically for those uses. You don't have to use it for everything just because we have it. I mean, and maybe I'm just, you know, maybe I don't know well enough the, the mechanics of it all. So maybe I, you know, me speaking of it doesn't seem to work, but it just logically, it seems like we should be able to use or we should use only what's necessary. Like he was just talking about there, wrap up your router to the point where it's just enough Wi-Fi signal that it reaches to the farthest part of your house. But it's not just bathing you in constant radiation. Um, use what you need. That's kind of a, a normal thing. You know, Americans, we, we are gluttonous. You know, our, our food portions are too large. Our consumption of everything is too large. So potentially our consumption of radiation is too large. Uh, he gave you some good tips there today in terms of taking care of yourself. And I would recommend buying a couple of uh, little, uh, some plugs you can buy them at Best Buy or, or some other type of electronic store, and they will turn the wiring in your house into an Ethernet cable. So as long as you put one in a specific room and then you plug in an electric uh, appliance, it will use that plug and it will use the wiring of your house like an Ethernet cable. You will have consistent steady internet you won't have to worry about a spotty wi-fi connection it will be beautiful i use it for my my smart television and my my streaming on on the television it works and ultimately you're using less wi-fi you're 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 emitting less radiation the radiation coming from the walls is less than the router so that's one um, strategy that you can use again cleaning your nightstand putting things out out of reach taking your animals away from along the wall. And he didn't actually mention it. He mentioned it to me previously that even people sleeping in their beds should probably be away from the wall. Because where, where is your head? Your head is maybe a foot from the wall. And uh, a safe distance from the radiation coming out of those wires would be six to eight feet. So if you put your bed in the middle of the room, uh, that might be safer. That seems odd. That's not a normal... Uh, decorating technique that we're doing right now. Who knows? Maybe in the future. Um, what do you think? Do you Are you worried at all about the level of radiation coming from your smartphone, coming from your microwave? That scared the hell out of me when he's talking about you got to be 40 feet away from your, micro, your microwave or it's just pumping radiation into my face. My microwave is at my eye level. And most of them are nowadays. They don't sit on the counter anymore. This isn't 1978. They're built into the cabinets now, so they're either they're coming straight at your head. Uh, you you are being irradiated, and how often are we using the microwave? Thirty times a day, forty times a day? I don't know. You you cook it a minute at a time. Um. So again, what are your thoughts? Do you have concerns? I do. Uh, you can contact me on our email account. It's prove me wrongcast at gmail .com. That is the email. Drop us a line. Let us know what you do to protect yourself from the electromagnetic radiation that is around all of us at all times. Do you do anything like that? Would you be opposed to using a Wi-Fi diaper, a Wi-Fi pacifier, a Wi-Fi bottle? Man, that just seems lazy as hell to me. What are you, what are you accomplishing by doing that to a child? Um, how is that in making your life better? I, I don't know. Seems like the old methods are kind of tried and true. We've been doing them for a while. You can also contact us on Facebook or Instagram. Just look for Prove Me Wrong. That's the name of the show. 
If you are looking for just more ways to listen to the podcast itself, we are on all podcasting platforms, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, uh, iTunes, anywhere that you find podcasts, you can find the Prove Me Wrong podcast. Like and subscribe to the show and you will be notified when a brand new episode is released. We release them once a week. We're also on YouTube. If you can see the scroll right here, you can like and subscribe to the Prove Me Wrong podcast YouTube page. And once again, you will be notified when a brand new episode is released. Uh, More like this. I think this is, uh, again, it's a very important episode. You know, talking about things that we are being attacked every day and don't even think about it. You know, smoking was very easy to tell that it was offensive and that it was there. You could smell it. It was right there. You knew when somebody walked in the room that they'd been smoking. It's disgusting. We don't have the same problem with the radiation of our phones because it's unseen. You don't, you don't smell it. There's no physical uh, impact on you for the six for the uh, the magnetic pulse every 6 to 30 seconds that is essentially destroying your body. So, you know, drop us a line. Let us know what you think. And uh, and I'll, I'll read them on the air. We'll talk about it. The Prove Me Wrong podcast tonight has been brought to you by Java Remix. Java Remix is the perfect blend of 100% organic Arabica coffee infused with nano emulsified CBD. Start your day off on the right foot with a great tasting cup of coffee with all the demonstrated benefits of pure CBD. Java Remix offers traditional ground coffee, as well as single-serve K-cups in both regular and decaf. And if you aren't a coffee person, Java Remix also offers CBD-infused teas and even beauty products like bath bombs and body scrubs. As an added benefit for our Prove Me Wrong listeners, if you go online right now, that's javaremix.com, and enter the promo code Prove Me Wrong you'll receive an additional 20% discount off of your entire shopping experience. And Java Remix also offers free shipping on all orders over $40, so you have no reason not to give it a try. Once again, that's javaremix.com, promo code Prove Me Wrong. The Prove Me Wrong podcast is brought to you tonight by Zendozone Citronella Burners from JT Eaton. They're shaped like fearless little bug-repellent tiki gods. So let's surf and stand. Hawaiian Howie and Luau Lily bring the islands to your backyard with Zendo Zone citronella burners. Zendo Zones uses natural 3% citronella candles and incense cones. They're perfect for patios, decks, backyards, campsites, poolside, and more. You can enjoy the outdoors again. They are available now on Amazon.com and at select Ace Hardware stores. Go ahead and collect them all today. So, once again, from my guest tonight, Mr. Bill Cadwaller from StopDirtyElectricity.com. Once again, my name is Pete Lieb. This is the Premier On Podcast, and we'll see you again soon. Mm-hmm.